What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and Show, where I, Graham G.S. and Matthews, break down all the original content you watch on the WWE Network and on Peacock. And today we're talking the December 17th, 2022 edition of the SmackDown Lowdown. We had Jackie Redman, Matt Camp, in the studio, breaking down the biggest headlines from Friday's show, including recapping the WWE Women's Tag Team title matchup, Liv Morgan, Tegan Knox unsuccessfully challenging damage control following interference from, uh, you know, uh, Zia Lee at ringside. Uh, her interference cost uh, Morgan and Knox the matchup, so we'll probably get more on that next week. They also run down or recap the Ronda Rousey Shayna Baszler attack on Raquel Rodriguez backstage. They've been doing this for weeks now, where they attack Raquel, injure her arm. Raquel will be, despite being attacked for weeks now and having her arm, I think it was, they said initially her elbow was dislocated and her arm was broken. Despite that, she's back in a month and she'll be back in the ring in the gauntlet match next week. So backstage, um, Megan Morant catches up with uh, Baszler and Rousey talking about what they did on SmackDown. Baszler runs down everyone listed to, you know, advertise to compete in said number one contender's gauntlet match next week. Tegan Knox, Liv Morgan, Zia Lee, Sonya Deville, blah, blah, blah. Baszler runs them all down and says, yeah, we already beat Emma. She already beat, you know, Ronda already beat Emma. She's already beaten Liv. Zia Lee, Sonya, we, we don't really take them seriously, which is a shoot. Um, not as far as they go, but as far as, like, why would anyone take them seriously as potential winners to this matchup? And uh, they also say that Raquel was the one that got involved in their business first, and that was really about it. So I think Ronda made another dumb joke. They really need to either do a better job of scripting her or give her a mouthpiece, because her mic skills at this point, she is much better as a heel than as a babyface, but her fucking promos and her, her, like, awful jokes are really, really bad. Uh, Matt Camp previews the gauntlet match, and listen, I'll say this. I think the gauntlet match could be good. There is some talent in there. The problem is that they, and I've said this ad nauseum over the last couple of months, I feel like I've seen a dozen fucking multi-women matches from SmackDown specifically to crown a new number one contender. If it's not a five-pack challenge or a a five-way or a six-pack challenge, it's a gauntlet match. I feel like we've seen so many of these multi-women matches, and a lot of the women in the match don't really, you know, haven't really done anything to earn an opportunity. Sonya, Zia Lee, I know Zia Lee just returned on SmackDown on Friday, attacking Liv and uh, Tegan, like I said, but what has she done to really earn her spot in this match? Sonya, I like Sonya. Why is she in this match? We know she's not winning. I mean, it, it's a complete waste. Honestly, at, this, at that point, just do something similar to Raw, where you take a few women from, uh, you know, just in, in triple threats, and some of the more main women that might actually deserve an opportunity, and then move on from there, so... I don't really understand that personally, but whatever. Uh, the match, again, like I said, should be fine. I'm sure Raquel's going to win. But, like, using these sort of matches to set up number one contenders has gotten really fucking lazy from the SmackDown side of things. After that, they replay the awesome Gunther Ricochet Intercontinental Championship matchup. They've had three matches this year. This was the third one. That match was tremendous. The first two were very good to great. This was awesome. Uh, definitely seek it out if you haven't already seen it from SmackDown on Friday. They also recap the Triple Threat Tag Team match, which wasn't quite nearly as stellar, with uh, Hit Row, Legato, and Viking Raiders, and the match really wasn't all that good. Uh, Megan Morant catches up with uh, Hit Row backstage. Top Dollar says that, you know, because the, 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 obviously really what was worth noting from that match, aside from the fact it wasn't all that great Hit Row 1, they're now going to challenge the Usos next week on SmackDown for the undisputed WWE Tag Team titles. But the real big takeaway from that match was the fact that he had that awful botch over the top rope. I saw him post a video of him performing that move on the indies and doing it perfectly. So, and he's lost weight since then too, so I don't know if he's injured or what the fuck is going on. I'm not even really sure why he attempted that if he didn't think he could do it. Maybe he thought he could do it, but I thought that was really dumb. He could have seriously hurt himself, if not someone else that he was in the ring with. So he goes on to say his leg wasn't 100%, which was pretty fucking clear if you watched the match. Because he, he was also tending the knee afterward. Obviously he had that bad botch, but it looked like he couldn't even hit the tag team finisher at the end of the match. So he says his leg wasn't 100%. Hopefully he's not too hurt. And they were able to tape the match for next week's SmackDown because it was already taped after our SmackDown this week. And he says that, um, you know, they beat two of the best tag teams in the world, which is a bit of a stretch. And I like Legato, but let's not get too carried away here in beating fucking Viking Raiders and uh, Legato Del Fantasma. He said it's their first big opportunity. BFAB says that they'll do what they have to do to win the gold. And Adonis says that everyone's saying they're the next, they're the next, they're the next, when Hit Row is the now. 
and Matt Cam kind of reiterates what uh, Top Dallas said, and that not only is this their first opportunity at the tag team titles, this is their biggest opportunity. Uh, we hear that Rey Mysterio is medically cleared to compete now from Mega Morant backstage. He catches up with Rey Mysterio, and he says that it's been a difficult time for him, a very emotional time, going through everything that's happened with Dominic in the last couple of months. Dominic broke his heart, and he starts to address Karrion Cross before being interrupted by Los Lotharios, Angel and Humberto, and... It was really funny because, not while I was watching Ray's interview, but while I, I don't know why, but they were just on the mind while I was watching uh, this episode of the uh, SmackDown Lowdown, because probably during the Hit Row interview, I'm thinking like, oh, SmackDown has a decent tag team division. By the way, where the fuck is Los Lotharios? They've been gone for months. I had to look it up because they have not had a match on TV since September. I think they lost the Hit Row on SmackDown in late September. That is wild. That is almost three months ago. And these guys are perfectly healthy. They've been on some house shows. That's a complete waste of what they can do. So they interrupt Rey Mysterio backstage. They say that they're the future. And that Rey is only feeding his ego by wasting television time on himself. Um, that he was the reason why Dominic was held back. Not in school, but in WWE. And uh, that he embarrassed Dominic for as long as they were together. And Ray has enough of their shit and challenges one of them to a match for next week. We find out in the studio right afterward that Ray Mysterio versus Angel is indeed official for next week's SmackDown. So I'm really looking forward to that. Angel Garza and Ray Mysterio should be a great match. They also replay the John Cena Titan Tron appearance from SmackDown. They preview the John Cena Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn tag team match on SmackDown. Not this coming Friday, but the December 30th SmackDown in about a week and a half. And Matt Camp brings up all their history with. You know, Sami Zayn having his first match on Raw back in the day against John Cena in 2015, the Roman Reigns-Sami dynamic, and also Kevin Owens attacking and defeating John Cena in his first debut match on the main roster back in 2015 as well. So a lot of intersecting stories that will be fun to follow in that match come December 30th. So that was the SmackDown Lowdown for December 17th, 2022. Uh, decent show here, really nothing out of the ordinary um, it was uh, fine for what it was. I thought, you know, I like the fact that we actually got a match announcement, which wasn't too surprising, just because they already taped SmackDown for next week, so we already know what we're getting on the show. Um, but I thought it was cool they announced Rey Mysterio versus Angel for SmackDown on Friday. Uh, the Hit Row interview was fine, and the Ronda and Shayna interview. Shayna's okay, but Ronda's promos are just fucking awful at this point. So <laughs> I mean, she tried, and honestly, this episode of the SmackDown Lowdown was all about hyping up that show for Friday, which I am looking forward to when I get around to watching it. So that brings me to my to my next point. Um, with the episode airing on the 23rd, I'll be out that night at various Christmas parties. So I don't know when I'll have a chance to watch SmackDown, probably early Christmas Eve. I don't know. Like I said yesterday in my SmackDown audio review here, on the, uh, in my SmackDown audio review here on the channel, I'm not sure when I'll get a chance to review the show in audio form or video form, whatever. Um, I'll, I'll try to review SmackDown, if not on Christmas Eve, then at some point thereafter, like I did last year. And I don't know if we're getting a SmackDown lowdown next week. I would assume not, because it's Christmas Eve. They probably won't put a new episode up on Christmas Eve. If they do, like I said, I'll get around to watching it at some point. So uh, just keep an eye out for that here on the channel. And that, the same goes for in two weeks as well. I know we have a SmackDown on the 30th of December. They may not want to do an episode of the uh, SmackDown lowdown show on... Uh, New Year's Day. So we may get a couple of weeks off from the show or on, on New Year's Eve, rather. So we'll see what they have planned for the coming weeks for this show and for SmackDown as well. Uh, thank you guys, as always, for checking out these reviews. I appreciate it. Be sure to uh, drop a comment, like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews. Have an awesome one, and I'll catch your ass down the road.